for your latest information, get expert opinion on an issue affecting us as Malaysians and citizens of the world. When we go face to face with our guests on Thursdays at 11:15 a.m. Only on Tracks FM. Hi, good morning, and welcome to Tracks Momentum on Tracks FM. Our guest this morning in the studios is Haja Juraida binti Umad. She's the Deputy Director of Examinations Assessment Policy Sector, Examination Syndicate Ministry of Education. That's a very long and a big mouthful over there. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Green Man. And welcome to Tracks FM. Thank you for joining us today. And um, who do you think should be the target audience of this topic that we're going to be talking about this t- today? Mm, I would say the public in general, mm-hmm. okay, and also, of course, uh, those uh, students who will be taking uh, exams, the SPM exams, and parents, teachers, and not not forgetting um, uh, what you call the public. Uh, the society, right. people who are concerned with the future of our education. Mm. And, what, and what about those who have set for SPM and, and you know, p- perhaps not pulled in a, uh, a good result or anything like that? Will, would this benefit them? Uh, definitely, because uh, to me, exam is uh, uh, the SPM exam is a year where they have struggled and they have done their best. So uh, whatever the result is, it is important that uh, our SPM leavers, they have to uh, plan or map their future journey, whether they want to continue their tertiary education or they want to go into the workforce. So what is important is that whatever the result is, that is not the end of the world. The world is, you know, wide for you to explore. There are a lot of choices and you have to make wise decisions. Right. So talk to people around you. Uh, get a, a, what you call... Um, uh, advice from experienced people, from uh, your friends who have gone through the process, or those uh, in schools, your school counsellors maybe, they can help you yes. uh, to map out your next journey in life. Right. It's very important. Don't be too stressful. Okay, the result is there. Whether you got straight A's or you have less A's or a lot more C's, is fine. What, what is important is that what you want to do next, that is the most important things. Because when you go through uh, schooling, you not only that you gain knowledge, but you also have skills. So uh, through your you socializing with your friends, there are a lot of strength that you have acquired. So make use of all your strengths. And you have to, um, what you call, uh, seek ways to improve and gain new skills and uh, be confident of what you have. So that will open up a lot more avenues for you to explore in the future. Right. So don't get disheartened with what is written on the paper. Mm, but make sure you have a plan. Yes. you have, you have uh, To plan is, uh, to me, is a step to succeed. So that is very important. That's very important. Yes. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Yes. Right? That's right. That's right. Okay, fantastic. Haja Juraida binti Umar as our guest this morning. She's the Deputy Director of Examinations, Assessment Policy Sector, Examination Syndicate, Ministry of Education. What's your name card look like? Juraida. <laughs> does, it, does it have all this inside? There's so mm, much over there. Yes, and a lot more. And how did you, how did you get to, to be in that position? Um, to start with, um, I came from a very small uh, village called... Okay, this will be the first time mentioning uh, on air. Uh, Sebrang Pintasan, a small town in Dungun, Trunganu. I'm from Trunganu. And when I was small, I went to a small, a very... Uh, what do you call... Uh, 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 a, a small school uh, in a small village... Okay, and um, it was a very tough time, um, but I love going to school. I was just narrating to a friend. Um, those years uh, was very meaningful to me as I learned to to love reading, and one of the things that I love until now is reading. 
okay, give me a book and uh, I'll be there. You know, you're lost in your own world. Yeah, yeah. And and even now, uh, one of the things that I enjoy most is going to uh, bookstores. Right. Uh, and and sit there for hours reading all kinds of things. Right. Yeah. And uh, I hope if I do have time, I would love to go to all those uh, book villages throughout the world and explore the world of books. Mm. And 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 also to share with our youngsters. Actually, to me, reading opens a lot of a uh, new world to you. It tells you a lot of stories, and sometimes you need those stories to uplift your um, gloomy days. Yes. So and also to motivate you to go further. Uh, so I think it is very important for our youngsters, especially our SPM leavers and those who will be taking SPMs, um, whether you like it or not. Reading will help you, uh, and when you when I say reading, it doesn't means that you have to do it alone. You can do it with your friends in groups, mm. make it enjoyable. That's right. Okay, you have uh, because uh, being students, we have different way of um, learning. Uh, we call it learning styles. So you have to go to your counselors. You will know a lot more about yourself because in schools we have this psychometric test. It will tell you about yourselves. So based on uh, this information, you will know whether you are the visual type of learners or the auditory or the ones who needs to uh, do a lot of um, uh, things with uh, movement, kinesthetic. Mm. So all this will assist you in learning and make your learning easier and more fun and more effective right to a certain extent and you're living proof of that we've seen where you know you you've gone you said you came from a small village yeah and and it doesn't matter where you came from it's where you plan to go to yeah and you've proven that right now with the position that you hold with the help of a lot of people especially by parents and also friends so always surround yourself with your families and friends who will be there for you and assist you because life is difficult but these people will assist you to make it easier and fun. Because to me, uh, making learning uh, fun is very important. So for parents, uh, teachers, and students, make it enjoyable for yourself. Right. Get something that... Um, because you know, especially if you are going to sit for uh, an important examination like SPM... It is very important that you have that stamina and ability to sit long hours to study. So if it is a torturous process, it will hinder your progress. So it is very important that you get people who will support you, whether it be teachers or your friends or even your parents or maybe the people in your community because um, nowadays there are support groups you know, people who are willing to assist you. Uh, maybe they are not in your schools, but uh, people from uh, schools within the neighborhood. So these are the uh, support uh, groups that you can go to and get helps. So in that kind of journey, I think you will find a lot of um cooperation, collaboration, and you will explore a lot of new things which will make your life more interesting. So at the end of the day, you will get what you want. Maybe that is good results in your examination, especially SPM. But more important is to make your life at that moment adventurous, and interest very well put and it's like it opens your mind when you when you when you read a lot and, and when you um you know, mix well uh, mingle with people yes. who give you positive feedback yes. but at the same time make sure you take care of your health go out play because play is very important right yeah mm. to be healthy is important if you want to do something important in your life yes your physical activity yes. as well yes. and yes. and especially when the, you're growing up and eat healthy. 
Eat healthy as well. Yes. Correct. Okay. Come. I've got some questions over here. Okay. Um, SPM 2021, the results were announced by the Education Director General, Dato Haja Nor Zamani Binti Abdul Hamid, on Thursday, 16 June 2022. Can you give us a brief overview of the SPM 2021? Okay, for SPM 2021, we have a total number of 407,097 uh, candidates who registered for the exams. Um, as we can see, there is an increase of 1.49% 4, 4, of the candidate compared to if we were to compare to the year 2020, where we only have 401,105 candidates. Okay. As we can see, uh, 2020, SPM 2020 was difficult. But for 2020, uh, 2021, we have a new set of challenges. So um, 2021, we have uh, our examinations in two uh, series. The first uh, sessions was from the 8th of February to the 29th of February. And the second one, this is where those who could not sit because uh, they were, um, what you call, um, uh, they were positive COVID and also they had to abstain because uh, because of the, what you call, um, they were the people. Circumstantial, who, a lot of things that were because of circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The close contact uh, yes. cases. Uh, yes, yeah. even. Yeah, so we had uh, the second one from the 5th of April to the 9th of May, where the number was, uh, we had candidates um, 86,999. So, and to ensure that this time around, with all the improved uh, procedures and uh, making sure that the these two series of examinations was, was properly conducted and all the candidates were safe. Uh, so we appointed uh, 50,514 invigilators to assist us in the uh, implementation of the exams. And uh, this year, that uh, is an additional of 2,500 people that we uh, seek. Uh, assistance to make sure that our students could go through the exams safely. And on top of that, we also have 21,195 examiners who we appointed to mark exam papers for 95 subjects this year. Right. So, okay, in terms of when we prepare our analysis, because everybody was very uh, um, curious to know how our students perform. So that was uh, 16th of uh, June was the much awaited uh, day uh, to our 4,000 plus, uh, 400,000 plus uh, candidates and also their parents and relatives. So when we report our SPM uh, performance, the candidates' performance, we use what we call the national grade average. Okay, uh, the national grade average, okay, the smaller the value of the uh, national grade average, that means our students are doing better. Okay, it's not like you have normally when you have 60 marks. That's good. But this one, if you have smaller number, smaller value, that means the results of our student is better. So this year, the national grade average is 4.86. Right. Okay. And um, uh, everybody, when we announce the, the uh, results, uh, our uh, director general uh, keep mentioning that do not compare uh, this year's uh, results to last year's because this is our first year where our students were using uh, a new curriculum therefore we have new formats to go with so that's why uh, throughout her speech on that day she kept telling that we cannot compare because it's a different curriculum altogether. That's right. So okay. It's like talking about, you know, Elvis Presley and, you know, the music today is rubbish because, you know, uh, you only know Elvis Presley, right? Uh, it's a change and a whole different thing right now. Yeah, but the new mu music is not rubbish because mm. I do enjoy it. You like from, it too. <laughs> yes, from time to time. Okay. I love uh, Elvis Presley, uh, but 
I do enjoy the current uh, music. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that's the way to go about things actually in life, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so uh, parents a lot of times are a lot more uh, worried about the results as compared to their kids. And, and they would be the ones who are fussing about and sometimes over fussing. I can't understandably because they want the best for their kids. Yes, that is normal for every parent. I, I, I believe that is a natural human instinct so uh, i would want the best for my kids mm-hmm. so but uh, with the new generation uh, they have a lot more to explore they have a lot more opportunities so uh, it's good to have a uh, high expectation of your kids but at the same time give them space to, for them to understand what they need, what they want, and we need to strengthen their uh, what you call uh, 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 the 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 positive uh, traits that they have, and help them to understand and to um, improve on some of the weaknesses that maybe they need to work on. That's right. At the end of the day, they need someone who's there for them and and to, you know, be with them throughout whatever yes. they're going through, whether it was good results or bad results, especially yes. if it was bad, right? Yeah, because uh, having bad results today does not mean that you will not succeed later. Right. So that is very important. That's right. Uh, we have a lot of uh, examples uh, mm-hmm. now. So... Don't worry too much. That's right. You have just started your journey. Mm. Uh, the next steps in your life. Correct. So, Our producer Catherine is such an example. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. We'll yeah. take a short break. We'll come back <laughs> after this. Let you have a chance to have a sip of water over there. Our guest this morning is Haja Jiraida Binti Umat. She's the Deputy Director of Examinations, Assessment Policy Sector, Examination Syndicate, Ministry of Education. We're talking about SPM 2021, the analysis right here on Tracks FM. Be inspired, informed, and up to date. Tune in to Tracks Momentum interview feature of the day at 11:15 a.m. Join us as we speak to our panel of guests on various topics. Health on Tracks on Monday, Tuesday, Spectrum, Wednesday, What Matters. Face to face with our guests on Thursdays and on Friday. Tune in to W Talk. Tracks Momentum Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Only on Tracks FM. Unwind from the traffic in Kuala Lumpur. Feast your ears to soothing music on your favorite station. Tracks FM 90.3 Kuala Lumpur. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Tracks FM. It's 35 minutes past 11. I am the Green Man with our guest this morning over here, Haja Jiraida Binti Umad Bidin, the Deputy Director of Examinations, Assessment Policy Sector, Examination Syndicate, Ministry of Education. Catherine is here to make sure I behave. So we'll get on with our continuing story over here. It's very interesting to talk to you about things that, uh, you know, you encountered in your life yourself. And, and we'd like to get into that. Sometimes people say things to somebody and, and that can be like, like there's a saying that says words hit harder than a fist. Yes. And and sometimes you say the wrong thing to somebody and, you know, you just dampen their whole future with, with some of those words, right? Yeah. But I, I always recall what my, my dad used to tell me. One person's opinion of you does not become your reality. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true, Greenman. Because um, when I was in my primary school, there was... But yeah, yeah, I went through this. Uh, this is my personal story. Uh, there was this experience when I was not very good because I had to move from my... Remember the small uh, school I went to? And I went to a slightly bigger school. So there I was in this class and I was not very good in one subject. That was English. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what happened was I came last in one of the exams. So I went home, you know, crying. Uh, for hours and uh, one day there was this a new teacher came to our schools and we had a lot of fun learning from him and from there I started to love English and uh, good for me 
uh, I had then uh, a few uh, very, uh, I, I would say, enjoyable years learning from him. And uh, eventually, when I was in university, I did TESOL for my first degree. Mm. So, yes, um, I remember his name, Cikgu Gopal. I'm not sure where he is now, but if you are there, sir, um, we met when I was in Sekolah Kebangsaan Desa Pahlawan, Kelantan. So thank you so much. I'm oh, here lovely. partly because of you, sir. Happy Teacher's Day. Yes. <laughs> Every day for you, yeah? And yeah, uh, uh, when you mentioned, uh, wait, hold on, we were talking about this. Is it true, as reported, nearly 25,000 candidates did not sit for the SPM 2021 exam? Okay, uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, the figure was uh, incorrect. Uh, in a way, it was uh, reported. And uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, this year we have 407,097 candidates who registered for the exams. However, when we um, produce our analysis on the 16th, Actually, um, for the purpose of that report, we only involve 392,837 uh, candidates because uh, when we produce uh, the write-up, we only include um, uh, candidates who set uh, for the first time, uh, who registered for the exam uh, for the first time, and they had to register... Uh, for at least six core subjects. So uh, when you register for SPM, actually you can just register for one or two or three uh, subjects. And it can be uh, that will, uh, what you call, um, you can repeat your, your, your uh, you reseed uh, your SPM. So um, that's why we have a bigger number of registration but for the purpose of the report we as i mentioned earlier it was only 39000 plus 39000 plus so out of this number actually only 97.38% of the uh, uh, candidates set for the exams and we have only 2.7 2% uh, of the candidates who were absent. That is about 10,681. So that is the the number that we go. And remember the, the circumstances we were under. Huh? Yeah, never that been, is. Yeah. It's, it's COVID and everything that we never experienced before. Yeah, and, right? and this, this cohort of students, they are the one who um, had to go through two years of uh, uh, the, what do you call... Um, the control movement. So um, when uh, in 2020 they were in form four, and in 2021 they were in uh, form uh, five. So uh, in terms of uh, the learning uh, hours, they have they this is the most affected uh, group of students. Right. So I think with the results that I mentioned just now, I think they did. Brilliant. Way to go, guys and girls. Yeah. And and you mentioned that the students in the first cohort who sat for the SPM using the new cur uh, curriculum, right? And that's something else again over yes, there. Yes, so yes. comparison with what was before is not really applicable. Yes. Uh, can you explain a little bit more? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, for the 2021 uh, candidates, uh, they uh, in 2017 when they were in uh, the uh, form one, they went through the new curriculum. Uh, we, the Ministry of Education, we introduced a new curriculum. Uh, we call uh, curriculum uh, standard sekolah uh, menengah. Okay. Uh, previously, we have this curriculum bersepadu sekolah menengah. Okay, so it's a new curriculum being uh, introduced in 2017. So these students, they went through five years of this curriculum, which aimed to equip uh, candidates with knowledge, skills and values that is relevant to the, uh, what you call the needs of the future world. And uh, this curriculum is uh, designed also uh, in line with the aspiration of the Malaysian Education Development Plan 2013 and 2025. 
So um, uh, throughout their learning period, uh, among the things that uh, they were being exposed to, uh, uh, the 21st century skills uh, such as uh, communication, collaboration, creative thinking. Because, you know, if you were to uh, look at the um, the World Economic um, Report, it is stated that in 2025, 2030, among the uh, skills that's most needed in in uh, doing your job will be one of the the tenth most uh, most required would be uh, complex thinking, uh, complex problem solving, and then you have uh, critical thinking, creativity, uh, coordinating, uh, managing people. So those are the skills apart from uh, communication. So those are the skills that students need to have in order for them to uh, be able to uh, to contribute to the society in the long run. So um, the new curriculum is designed for the students to have all the skills to go through the process and uh, being able to apply all the skills and knowledge in their real life and eventually able to contribute to the society, uh, whether socially, economically, or for their, uh, what you call, leisure. Right. So, yeah, you've made that very clear. And I hope, yeah, I hope it's clear for a lot of people out there to understand that right now, yeah? And so if yes. I can add, mm. okay, so with the new curriculum, okay, we have um, 95 subjects I mentioned just, just now, and uh, uh, a few... Um, if I'm not mistaken, 27 subjects, the new subjects. So, so all these changes with the new format and and uh, the new subjects. So it is um, it is unfair when people ask uh, how are they the 2021 SPM students doing uh, as compared to the 2020 uh, cohort. Mm. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And uh, with the pandemic, COVID-19, closing of schools, online and offline learning, plus the new exam format, uh, it was quite a challenge for SPM 2021 candidates. How do you view this? Do you think these factors contribute to their performance? Uh, no doubt, because uh, I mentioned just now, this is the most affected groups because uh, it, we started in 20, uh, March 2020 and until last year, if I'm not mistaken, around November, October, November, when we started opening our schools. So um, in in some schools, when these students, they were in Form 4, uh, in some schools, they had to take turn going to schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in a way, uh, there are uh, limited time for them to learn face-to-face definitely impacted their learning. Uh, but um, uh, with the support of the teachers and uh, having that experience, you know, uh, and also the materials that being uh, produced uh, in 2020 where uh, teachers step up uh, in producing uh, materials, learning materials, teaching materials, whether in digital format or printed format. So I think the students also uh, gain benefits uh, from all this. Uh, sometimes it depends on you whether you want to explore. Like I myself, uh, uh, when I I started, uh, you know, um, um, exploring uh, materials on YouTube through my handphone because I was being told by many teachers that uh, in 2020, 2021, parents started, you know, parents, individuals, uh, NGOs, they started contributing to our uh, students, especially those who are sitting for exams, uh, devices, and also uh, support in getting uh, printed materials to these students. So all these uh, materials, uh, the learning materials, plus the experience of the teachers. In 2020, the teachers um, were less experienced, but as 
time goes by, they have started collaborating and uh, having the new skills to adjust to the new uh, norms in teaching and learning. So I guess to a certain extent that helps our students and they themselves. Uh, I think uh, interestingly, uh, when you go through a difficult uh, time in life, you adjust. That is a normal human instinct. So I guess having that two years of adjusting to a new way of learning in a way give you advantage. And um, I believe, um, I, I personally believe, uh, with the collaboration of teachers and the technology that we have, though I'm not denying that a small group of students, they do not have access, especially those in rural areas, but with the support of simple technologies and um, what you call, um, with the help of teachers, uh, these students, they were able to get the best of uh, teaching from teachers, experienced teachers across the countries. Because I saw there was one initiative in one of the uh, states where they uh, get students but this is through online, uh, where they get um, master teachers to teach and students can join in, uh, regardless of uh, their locations. So that was one of, of the advantages uh, during the hard times that our students went through. Right. So I guess there's always, um, what do you call, silver lining? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, and I suppose the teachers have come out of, of all this a lot stronger these days and a lot more... Creative. Equipped. Yeah. And creative as right? well. And, and it was pretty unfair. There was a time when the teachers were just coming out on television and people expected them to become like TV presenters and stuff, which they are not and which they should not be judged upon because they are, that's not them. But uh, the fact that they tried to, to do something which is out of their norm and and be creative and make, and they know that they had to make it fun as well, I take yes. my hat off to, to all those teachers. And I know a lot of people who actually do respect a lot of teachers for what their efforts and what they did. In fact, we do have at Tracks FM lots of teachers who do listen to us and they do communicate. And the frustrations they went through, school opening, they were excited, they were getting prepared, and then school closing, and they're back to square one again, you know, and they did tell us some of their frustrations at this opening and closing, which is not of their fault, but yeah. because of the circumstances with COVID. And, and you know, it's, it's good and very um, nice to know that there are so many teachers who are dedicated to that extent. Yes, um, um, you are totally right. And uh, I think um, the, the year 2020 and 2021, it teaches us a lot especially to our teachers. Uh, it opens up their, uh, what do you call, if you call the studio your playground, then classroom will be yes. the, is their, their playground. That's right. So, so I think uh, being flexible is very important as educators. And uh, the, um, the results of our students shows, despite the difficulties, because if you, uh, if you read, actually uh, Malaysia is, um, is one of the countries that still uh, continue with our uh, national exams despite the hardship that we have went through. So um, head off to our teachers who... Um, despite the difficulties, they continue to give all they have to our students to make sure that the learning process of our students um, was, despite it being uh, uh, what you call difficult, but uh, they tried their very best to make sure that they reach out to their teachers. Uh, you have a lot more in interesting right. stories how the teachers try to reach out uh, oh, yes. Yeah, to yes. Their, their kids. Yes, I, yeah. I interviewed a teacher um, who who carried a fridge all the way up to, the, through the mountains and everything just to give his students ice cream for the first time where they were, somewhere in Sabah. And, and this teacher actually literally carried a fridge on his back. 
uh, he was a strong fella. Yeah, know? yeah, but, yeah. And, and he went through all that just to bring the fridge there because there was no roads or anything that could bring this fridge up to the kids. And he did that. And then there was another teacher who helped uh, blind students uh, be able to run without having to be, uh, you know, chained by the mm-hmm. wrist to another person who runs along with them. It was like a shopping trolley, and then he modified it. And, and you know, now that person, uh, you know, especially for a lady sometimes, you, you know, if you're running with a male partner and stuff and then having to touch the male partner and stuff, you know, but in this case, they are free. They're yeah. able to hold on to that and they can run on their own. And that person, whoever it is, the sighted person, will be at the back holding the other trolley. And, you know, it's like things that some teachers go through to do. And really, hats off. Yes, the sacrifice of our mm. teachers. Nice. It's nice yeah. to know. That yeah. really yeah. is good to yeah. know, yeah? And, yeah. and uh, kids can be assured of that at least, yeah? And, yeah, okay. Oh, time, time, time. It's always ticking. And right now we've got, uh, well, let's have two messages from you. One to the teachers and one to students. Okay. Um, we, first of all, we at the Ministry of Education, we appreciate every little things that our teachers do for our children. Uh, because we know the children are our future. So to our teachers, please continue with your work. Give your best. And that will be your best present to your country and to your children, to the future of our country. For the children, enjoy your um, uh, childhood uh, experience. uh, And don't forget to read. Read and read. Reading will bring new world to you, despite where you are. And always uh, believe in yourself. Uh, do new things every day if possible because that that way you will uh, discover who you are along the process and don't give up I like that I like that yeah there you do do something that scares you perhaps yeah but not dangerous no? yeah 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 not and, dangerous. and stay healthy yeah stay, stay healthy, healthy is stay important healthy. right okay yes. is it going to be a busy day for you when you get back after this are you going back to the uh, office or what is it you have to do yeah, I'm a sebo. Uh, I tell you, these DJs are all sebo, sebo. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, not really busy, mm-hmm. but we have uh, we have a lot of things that we plan mm. uh, just to make sure that uh, learning for our children will be fun. Right, mm. learning is done best in moments of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for being our guest today. Um, I look forward to the next time we can talk and uh, we'd like to say thank you to Hajar Juraida Binti Umat this morning Deputy Director of Examinations Assessment Policy Sector Examination Syndicate Ministry of Education what else is on your mind? Mm, to have fun in life yes and uh, I hope uh, I will be able to um, inspire people through the work that the Ministry of Education do uh, so that we can, uh, together, we can build a stronger nation. Right. Yeah. There you go. Open to um, suggestions uh, and how, if, if people have got something constructive, how? Actually, we, the Ministry of Education, we always welcome ideas on how we can assist our uh, uh how we want to make our education system better because we know that uh, when our children go through schooling um, the world that they are facing in the near future will be different so they need all the help uh, from our uh, society from individuals NGO to together we assist our kids to go through uh, their schooling years um, with things that will prepare them for the future. So uh, at the Ministry of Education, we welcome constructive ideas uh, so that we can, uh, together, we can, uh, uh, what you call, execute whatever programs or plans that we have designed better and more effective. Thank you. Thank you Most so welcome. much. Hi, Jaraida Binti Umat. Thank you for the gift of your time this morning. Yeah. 